Well, coming up, will the NBL introduce in-season trades? And Izzy Bourne joins us from the Lightning. We're talking Jordan Poole. Seriously, who would trade for him? John Casey and I are going to mark every single NBL team, and there's a few Fs flying around. They go hard too. Check it out. This is The Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel. What they going to say next? Hello, Joe and Hammer with you. All thanks to Code Sports, Boost Mobile and the Throwback Store. Shout out to Mike and the team. 12 years for the Throwback Store. How so good. Congratulations to them. And don't forget it's Black Friday this week. So check out the website and also Boost Mobile. Some, uh, some quality deals. It's not even Black Friday yet and it's already the death of me. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna, it's... <laughs> get in there and get some kicks. It's good stuff. Great yeah. fit out. Yes. Throwback. Oh, my goodness. Exactly right. Uh, plenty to get through today. Yeah, heaps. Heaps to talk about. Uh, a lot of good stuff today. Let's get straight into it with our starting five. We're going to kick things off with the NBA and talk about the conference tables briefly. Top of the West at the moment is the Timberwolves. Big win over Director Dave Nicks yesterday. My T-Wolves. <laughs> Anthony Edwards, how good. He's, he's been excellent. What have you liked about what you've seen? And are there any surprises at the top there? Well, I, I, I think um, everybody writes off the Nuggets, even though they've won a championship. It's almost like they've forgot about it a little bit. Um, Don't you reckon? Uh, no, what? I think they do. I think people go, oh, they want the shiny new toy, Phoenix, and all these other things. Steph's going to still win. And they forget about them with it, I guess because they've got a European superstar. But without Jamal okay. Murray to be 9-4, and four, Mm -hmm. They've done really well. But um, Anthony Edwards, he's really taken his form from the World Cup. This young star that just has so much enthusiasm. I'm not sure they're going to win it, but I think they're, uh, they're going to compete for a long way. Very impressive at this point. The Thunder as well are third. Five wins yes. on the trot. Uh, and good. Josh Giddy, perhaps there was a little bit of criticism around him a few weeks ago. And he's, he's put his foot down since. I'm not sure it's criticism, but more just looking at speculation about whether he could potentially get traded. There was some story come out, but we know he's a talent. No matter where he's playing, he's a talent. He's going to continue to grow, and uh, they've got a good team. Top of the East, less surprises there. Celtic 76ers, Bucks. What stands out? Well, we, I mean, we liked Boston from the start. They had such a great team. They're always going to be really good, and uh, and they've been able to prove it. I just like their balance. They know who their superstars are. You know, Tatum's had some big games, but then other games where he's been prepared just to be able to sit back as well. Holiday's the perfect superstar to play with those guys because he's not in a rush to score. Mm -hmm. he, he's okay if he can get six or eight points, and but he'll have his, his six rebounds and five assists, and, and uh, other games he'll be a little bit more aggressive, but he's more content. So I think he's the perfect fit um, that allows Tatum and Brown to do what they do. Quality defensive backcourt great. as well with him and with White. White. White's been great Exactly too. right. Uh, let's talk Jordan Poole. Reports out of DC is that the Wizards are potentially going to look to move him on as part of a, a significant trade rather than keep him as a franchise guy. He wanted to be that guy, having been a role player with the Warriors. He's telling everybody it, that he's that guy. It hasn't quite gone He to keeps plan. saying, this is my team. You probably saw the uh, highlights on social media of him in the timeout, just with no interest whatsoever. Uh, I can see why Draymond Green punched him. No, I can. I can, this is, can you imagine this sort of attitude behind the scenes, um, you know, when he was at Golden State? That is why Draymond Green <laughs> wanted to strangle him. And he's the sort of guy that will just come out and do that. No, surely no one wants him. It's not like you say, yeah, we're going to trade him. Who wants that? I, I think you forget, well, I forget, he's, he's still young. He's 24. There is, there is a, he has a long that. career ahead of him, so long as, as you say, maybe he can get the, the mental right and whatnot. No winning team wants that. Nah. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. That's poor. Well, let's see what, what plays out Go. there. Uh, a little closer to home now. Congratulations, Damien Martin, the Perth Wildcats, retiring number 53. Well deserves. One of my favourites. Just unbelievable success over a long period of time and he's that guy like he wasn't a big scorer but he was as tough as nails the greatest defensive player that we've ever seen and a great bloke as well so his number goes up in the rafters and uh very very well deserved six-time nbl champion six-time defensive player of the Should year have been 10. and as you say just all-round all great guy great glue guy as well for for the organization and very much a, a reason why they've been so successful for so long 
WNBL now. The Boomers and Lynx are undefeated. Townsville third, the Adelaide Lightning fourth. Is the season going to plan at this point? Oh, I, I really don't know. But uh, I have checked out Ari McDonald. Ari uh -huh. McDonald, if you haven't checked in to watch this young lady play, mm -hmm. plays for the Perth Lynx. She is a superstar and a great pickup over there. And the Boomers, they've done well from their superstar point guard with Jordan Canada as well. So uh, last week, Canada had 26, 7 and 8 assists in her game. Ari McDonald had 34 points and uh, no surprise that the two undefeated teams have probably got the two best point guards in the league right now. No, not at all. Uh, the Lynx in action tonight against Southside. Plenty more WNBL coming up as well. The Lightning's Izzy Bond will be joining us as a special guest, so stick around for that. Five. Time for our favourite segment, Hammer Hoops Highlights, thanks to Boost Mobile. How's this from Mallow? Goes one way, comes back the other, crosses him over with a left hand with a beautiful kiss off the glass. He has been bowling recently. Four. I love this. The Slob Wizard strikes again. He finds Holgren, the turnaround shot to tie it, and Chad Holgren with the three at the buzzer. Chet with the three. But it's our man Josh Giddy with the decision making on the sideline out of bounds. Three. As Struess is there and ready to shoot. Rattles out. Mobley got his hands on it. Tried to save it. Does Struess in the basket? That is nasty. Hammer, why did Miami get rid of him? I have no idea, but that's how you finish. Woo. Two. Number two, heading over to Spain for this one. How is this from Andres Feliz? Ooh, All the way from Badalona. How do you like that? And for the wind as well. Have you ever done that? Not from that distance, I don't think. <laughs> I was courtside for this one, Hammer. What a moment. For the win, it's Jack McVeigh. And he absolutely loved it. Those are your hoops highlights, thanks to Boost Mobile. Yes, Matty Logue is in as he is every week for the Logue Down. Matty, good to see you. Uh, New Zealand basketball are mm. set to announce a mid-season trade. This is really interesting. Cool. Talk to me. Yeah, so they're looking for the 2024 season, bringing a trade window on the proviso that the player agrees to the trade. Now, I'm told from NBL types that they'll watch this closely as a bit of a test case to see how it goes because there's been a push for a long time to have a trade window in the NBL. Forever. It would, be, it would add so many layers from a news point of view, so many stories. In fact, in all the papers across the country, we're doing a mock trade scenario um, of in the NBL. So, like, for example, like Aaron Baines could go to... Um, Adelaide, they need a big man, and then Mitch McCarron could go to the Bullets, or you, you know, even um, there's a number of players like Angus Glover at the Kings. He's sitting on the bench. He's already won two championships. He's a starter. Like let him let him go and be a starter. So go somewhere else and play, and and you swap it over, you know. But anyway, it's all hypothetical. But at the end of the day, Shane, there is some blowback. There's some blowback from that that that, that claiming that the NBL is not ready for it. Why is it not ready? Like. Mm. For me, I've heard it's more the Players Association saying maybe that the the players don't want to have... Well, they get the final choice. You mm. go to Corey Webster right now and say, hey, mate, there's a team that wants you. You're sitting on the bench. You're stale. They want to be able to reinvigorate what you do. Of course he would want to trade. If As long as the player gets the right to be able to say, no, 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 I don't want to move, I then everything's good. Agreed. There's only upside for both the club and and the players to be able to make this happen as long as the player gets the last right. So imagine at the moment we've got like a, a feed break and we're all sort of saying, oh, you know, it's it's hard, like there's no games. So imagine during this window, as an example, you've yeah. got all these potential trades happening and suddenly like the NBA and in other sports, it just adds these news layers that's... Well, especially, I think it's got to happen. Well, especially be really because good. there's so many teams with injuries. We've seen, look at New Zealand right now, and you use the Corey Webster situation, and, and they need somebody. They need people to be able to come in right now. Mm. And um, that still keeps everybody involved where maybe they've got a chance to be able to make a move um, and, and give themselves a chance. 11 games in, 
It's, it's going to be tough for New Zealand. They should be able to do something to improve their roster. And it keeps those fans activated just course. quickly. Because, you know, when you lose a bit of hope, but if you give them something, then it's like, mm. oh, it's engaging as many teams for as long as possible. Corey Webster, back to the New Zealand Breakers, is a <laughs> brilliant example, by the way. Uh, the Hawks, so let's move on. They're one for one under yeah. interim coach Justin Tatum. What's the mm. latest on their search for a new boss? Yes, yeah, so my understanding is they've told interested coaches including Judd Flavel that like just cool your heels we're going to give Justin his due process to, to turn this around so this could end up being like we said last week for the remainder of the season potentially that he had a win last week but as we've seen like teams when they sack a coach the following week players usually respond let's see how it goes the next couple of weeks so these are pretty of a, a rough you know draw but the other layer to this is we've got an exclusive with Jacob Chacomas um, he was pretty classy. I'll give you give him a lot of credit. Like he he said, like there's no bad blood with the Hawks. He said, ideally they could have given me more time to turn this around, but realistically, too, he gets it's a business and the results were record low. Um, but he's vowed that his career is not over. His coaching career is not over. He's moving back to Sydney. I don't know what you guys think. You know, particularly you know Shane. Like it's going to be tough to get another head coaching gig, but he's got those runs on the board now. It was a tough situation in Illawarra. Like. Like, yeah. you've got to give him some credit. He, he, he's a lifer for basketball. Agreed. He's going to be able to contribute. Agreed. It doesn't matter. I know he was doing some coaching at associations and schools and everything else. He's somebody that can add a lot to any program. High-level assistant coach. I don't think he'll get another NBL head coaching job, mm. but he'll help somewhere. He's a classy guy, great guy. And, um, you know, the good thing is he's getting paid for the next couple of years, so he's got time to be able to work out what he wants to be able to do in his basketball career. Uh, good on him. Good on him. Um, NBL break this weekend, Matty. Does that mean you've got it off as well? <laughs> <laughs> Six days a week in the season, Joe, in some capacity. No, 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 it never stops. But um, I must admit, yeah, like there's part of you like, oh, can we have a little, little break, just a little <laughs> one? But no, no, it's, it's always on, Joe, and plenty of news kicking about. Um, and you know, as we get towards the, the when the whips crack and like, I think it's a, it's a close comp. Everyone's saying Melbourne United are the favourites and they deserve that, but... Oh, I think there's a few teams there that might have something to say. Already looking forward to the fever window being over. All right, <laughs> let's keep things moving. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have a special guest today, Adelaide Lightning's Izzy Bourne is jo joining us from South Australia. Izzy, so great to have you on the show. Uh, you guys are coming off a, a good win over Southside. What have been the key takeaways and feedback from that one? Uh, just really good momentum for us going into the next couple of games. I think we needed a, a win at home um, and to get it against Southside was really, really good for us. We had a, um, a strong, you know, competition there and we fought really hard and we're a high paced running team. So to go out and um, really give it to them for 40 minutes is what we've been working on and to come out with a win was really great. Well, Izzy, I've seen you progress from junior teams, playing with my little baby, mm -hmm. onto college and now back to the WNBL. Um, congratulations on your career so far. What, what have you found the biggest difference being a pro now? I think transitioning to pro is a lot more of it is on you to have self-discipline, to be great. Um, you know, they give you a lot of freedom to... Um, do more, do extra, get extra working, go to the gym more, do what you need to do. Um, so being able to come to a pro level and know what your body needs and what you need going into games to be at your best, um, I think has been a big learning curve for me and really, really um, fun for me, I would say, just learning how to um, get myself ready for each game. You've got some really great uh, teammates and some wonderful experience on the Lightning team, Izzy. Someone like Brianna Turner is an absolute rebounding machine. What have you learnt playing alongside her given all of her WNBA experience? I think learning from her, I mean, for me going up against her, even just at trainings every day, um, learning how to get around big defenders has helped my game so much. So even just being able to go against her in trainings, um, I've learned so much. But being in games with her, you know, she's locked in for 40 minutes. Um, she does the little things every single time. Um, and she's just a really good leader. So being around that um, is really fun for me. She's one of those players. Her pick and roll defense is off the charts. She doesn't worry about how many points she's got. It's about those details. So you keep watching her. But what about some of the stars you're playing as? Lauren Jackson, obviously, you would have seen for a long, long time since before you were born. Uh, who are some of the better players you've played against and enjoyed that? Yeah, well, obviously, LJ um, was really, really a big one for me that I wanted to focus on, like watching her and growing up 
uh, watching her and then having to, you know, defend her um, was one of the coolest experiences I think I'll have in my basketball career for sure. Um, but then, you know, Perth Lynx having to box out Annalie all game is tiring and it's difficult. So there's a lot of different matchups for me in different teams, you know, to play against big or maybe small um, rebounders. So being able to be versatile and um, play against different people is really good for me. Izzy, we had John Casey on the show earlier. He mentioned that you shadowed him at the NBL game in Adelaide the other day. What was that experience like? And is that something that you're looking to sort of get into post your basketball career, albeit it's a long way away now? Yeah, uh, being a shadow for him at NBL was awesome. Um, I don't think I realised how much goes into that and how hard it actually is. Um, His job is incredible and what he does is incredible. The notes, the detail that he uh, knows about the game was so cool to be around. I think, you know, if it's not me commentating, um, just being around, you know, the behind the scenes uh, media at NBL games is something I'm interested in. So learning and seeing uh, what goes into each, you know, game um, is something that I think I could see myself doing in the future for sure. Big game against Townsville coming up as well. They're the uh, league leaders. They won last year. What do you expect there and what are you going to have to do to get that W? I think we're going to have to be locked in for 40 minutes. You know, uh, we've had some ups and downs uh, in the last couple of games and just being able to really play defence for 40 minutes I think is going to win us games throughout this whole season. I think, you know, offence, um, we play quick and we I think we shoot great shots. Sometimes they don't drop, but I think... Um, just like the last game, defence is going to win us games for sure. Well, Izzy, you guys are fourth on the table at the moment, going in the right direction. Good luck for the game against the Fire and, of course, for the rest of the season as well. Thank you so much. Good luck, Izzy. The time now to welcome in Australian basketball guru John Casey to talk all things NBL. Case, okay, great to have you on. We're obviously in the FIBA window at the moment, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to rate each of the NBL teams and where we think they're at at this point of the season, eight rounds in. We'll work backwards on the ladder. So starting with the Hawks, what's your assessment of them so far? Well, Joe, before I say that, can I just say I knew this program would improve when you got back. Guru's a bit strong, but I'm loving <laughs> you back in the bench chair there. But Illawarra, I'm not loving. Yes, they've won three games this year and they went 3-25 and last year. But they promised so much and they've underperformed. And I know there's mitigating circumstances, but everyone's got excuses. And I'm going, I don't think the Illawarra Hawks have lived up to expectations. So they're down the ladder as far as I'm concerned. Well, I couldn't agree more, Case. They won three games last year. They signed their coach to an extension after winning three games. They'd already won two out of nine. And then they decided to sack him. Where are you going? What's going on for the organisation? There's only one result they can get. So what is your assessment, gents? It's an E for me, an F, hammer, going hard. F, F, they failed, no doubt about that. Well, I'm, he's my lowest, so I guess that's effectively an F as well. <laughs> yep. Love that. Uh, what about New Zealand? They can't catch a break with injuries. Where are they for you? No sympathy from me, I'm afraid. Every team's got injuries. New Zealand three and seven. This time last year, they were ten and three. They're on top of the ladder, and they went eighteen and ten on the season and finished second at the regular season. So New Zealand breakers to me. Yes, they've got injuries. We'll go out and get another player. They, they're letting themselves down a little bit here, and they are way off where they were last season. Well, I couldn't couldn't agree more. I mean, they've still got enough talent to be able to win games. When you look at their two imports with uh, uh, Jackson Cartwright and Lamb both averaging 20 points a game. Some of their other guys, like Delaney, he's got talent. He was a superstar before he went to Europe. Hasn't shown any of that at stages where they need to be able to step up. I know they've got injuries, but they need to be better. Not good enough so far. Ratings? No good. Case, Case, what's yours? We can't see it. Oh, sorry about that. E? An E. Okay, so the lowest (laughs) rating for, for New Zealand as well. Uh, What about Adelaide? They enter the break on a little bit of a high coming off of that come-from-behind win over the Phoenix, but their season hasn't been great. No, they've been terrible as well. And yes, they beat the Phoenix, but they came from 17 down at quarter time. They're not going to do that every week. And right now, four and seven on the ladder. So they're eight. This time last year, they were six. They were five and five. They won 13 games last season. They're not going to win 13 games this season. They're one win off the bottom of the ladder. It's been poor. Yeah, I've got to agree with you as well. The latter and their results suggest that. And, you know, this is CJ's third year 
in charge. The first year as Jeff Van Groningen picking the team, the next year he got a chance to be able to pick what he wanted. And if it wasn't for DJ Vasilovic, they might be on the bottom of the ladder by far. So uh, they've really struggled. You can't see where they're going. You can't see what direction or what their strategy is moving forward. And uh, as, as good as DJ's been with the amount of points he's averaging, just bad, bad year so far. Dare I even ask what you've given Adelaide then? It's not good. D. D and an E. All righty. Uh, Cairns, guys, they are yet to play with their full squad at full fitness. Case, where have you got them? Well, that happened to them two seasons ago as well, and they're able to be a little bit better than they are at the moment. I think they've got problems. They're seventh on the ladder, four and six. This time last year, they were seven and four and third and went on to win 18 games. So they've got a lot of ground to recover. No sympathy. Yes, they had to travel. Yes, they've had injuries. Everyone's had injuries, as I say. They need to be better. You've got to score more than 10 points in a quarter. They do, Case, and I, I think they made their own bed with the decision of wanting to go and play against the NBA team. So when you want to go and do that, and, and there's a lot of positives that we've spoken about doing that for the NBL and the individual players, but then on the backside of it, you can't have as much sympathy when you get home and you've got tough schedules as well. A lot of problems. I think they could come good as the season goes on. So I've got a C-plus for them, guys. Yeah, well, I think they can improve as well, Hammer, but I'm giving them a D because they should be better than where they are at the moment. What about the Bullets? Uh, it feels like a whole lot has changed there in terms of the culture. There are some promising signs, but they just haven't been able to execute at the end of games case. I'm glad you asked, Joe, because finally I can say something positive. Brisbane, sixth on the ladder, five and seven. They've been impressive. This time last year, they were ninth. They were three and seven. They only won eight games all season last year. To be five and seven and a rookie coach, so much excitement about them. Still room for improvement. They're running the Australian guys. I really think that they've done an excellent job here. To me, they've been one of the great improvers this season. Well, I agree with that too, Case. And I don't think they're a team that has a chance to win it and potentially they don't even make the playoffs. But I think what Justin Schuler's come in, they've taken an underachieving franchise that hasn't made the playoffs forever. They've recruited with a strategy of guys that can come in and play a role. Australian guys like Norton and McDaniel that have been really valuable for them. I don't see them with the same sort of talent as some of the other top teams in the league, but you see what his strategy is and the culture that they're building. Baines was out five games um, and I think they're on the right track. So for me, B minus. If I could give them if I could give a B plus, I would, but I'm not doing plus or minus. I'm giving them a B and Hammer, they are playing finals. Yeah, right. I had them a, a C plus actually, but there you go. Uh, South East Melbourne guys, they should be a lot higher, let's say, than the, what they are at the moment. They've lost three of their last four. What's your assessment case? Six and six at the moment, fifth on the ladder. This time last year, they were seven and five and fourth. They've got a better roster this year. I think they've underperformed. They finished fifth last season, won 15 games. I think you're right, Joe. They should be better than where they are. They've let games slip. How did they lose that game here in Adelaide, leading by 18 in the third quarter? I don't know. And they've had opportunities to beat Melbourne United and couldn't get across the line. So they are OK, but they should be better than they are. There's no doubt about that. And if you look at their roster, they've potentially got the best four players as far as a combination of talent goes with their great guards, that big source in the middle who we know is dominating, but he has to be better as well. Too undisciplined, continually getting in foul trouble. He's so important. He needs to be more professional. they got Creek there as well. And a whole lot of good role players. They should be far better. They're not. I'm not calling them fool's gold at the moment, but I fell in love with them early. Thought they could be much better. But that game they lost to Melbourne United with so many players out of United, they still couldn't get that done has worrying signs for me. I think they should be much better. What have you got, guys? C+. Plus. Case, what's yours? That's a C. A C as well. OK, on the right track. Uh, a tale of two seasons, quite literally, for the Perth Wildcats. Absolute dire straits to begin with. They've now won five on the bounce case. Yeah, look, they have won five on the bounce, but I'm not getting carried away. I mean, a couple of those wins, they, they beat Adelaide when they gave up a 20-point lead and they were able to get the better of an undermanned Cairns, an undermanned New Zealand. They beat Melbourne when they trailed for the vast majority of the game. I'm not sold on the Perth Wildcats. Seven and five, yes, they've improved on where they were last year at this stage when they were five and six and seventh on the ladder, but I really don't see them making too much noise. And Derek Rucker, our good pal, says they're playing better than Melbourne. I've got no idea 
what Derek is on, suggesting they're playing better than Melbourne because that is no way near what they're doing at the moment. Yes, those, as I say, they've got those wins, but they haven't been impressive. They gave up a 20-point lead against Adelaide and almost lost. You can't grow hair on rock, Derek Rucker. And uh, (laughs) the Perth Wildcats, I I agree with you to a certain degree, but I'm going to give them a little bit of credit because when you go through a losing stage like they did, the amount of pressure that is involved, especially when you've got the Red Army behind you, they turn on them quick, on the players, on the coach, on the, the ownership, the whole lot. So for them to be able to turn that around, they've got themselves in a position where they can compete now. Whether they go to the next level is interesting. Credit to John Rilly for making some changes that probably should have been made earlier because we called them a fantasy league team. He finally put Wagstaff in there. Harris, I think, plays a valuable role. So now you've got guys that don't necessarily just want to score points and do do the fancy things you got guys that are prepared to play a role and it's worked for them can they continually grow i'm not sure i'm not sure they'll win a championship but uh they're in a lot better position than they were so for that reason i'm going to give them a b minus i'm giving them a c hammer i'm giving john really a b and please don't mention hire harris to people who live in adelaide i wish he was still here <laughs> <laughs> uh what about tassie guys this is a bit of a tough one they're third on their t- on the table but defense has been an issue for them where have you got them uh, don't worry about the defence, Joe. They'll come good with that. And it's all about the offence. I love Tassie. Seven and five, third on the ladder. This time last year, they were six and six. They went 16 and 12 last year to finish top four. They're a top four team again. Love the coach. Love everything they do. And how about the excitement of Jack Bay hitting that game winner? That was all time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think they're going to be a top four case, but I don't think they're going to win it. I don't think they can win it. I love the fact that Magne's back into the lineup. They've done well. He's sort of that forgotten guy a little bit. And then when you see him, you're like, wow, he's unbelievable. And, and I hope he's in good shape and good health to be able to play the rest of the season because he's one of the most dominating bigs that we've got in the league and exciting bigs as well. Jack McVeigh, you've got to love everything about the way he lives. I don't think they'll win it, but a B for me, I think they've done okay. B for me too, Hammer, and you're right about Magna. You played that one game in the NBA. I think he's. we're yet to see the best of him, and that's exciting. He is loving being back from all reports as well. Guys, the Sydney Kings are second. Sean Bruce said in the week that they are still the team to beat. Do you agree? No, they're not the team to beat, but they are doing well. Seven and four, second on the ladder. This time last year, they were eight and three and second on the ladder. Went on to go 19 and nine to win the regular season championship. Been really impressed with Jonah Bolden. Been outstanding. Didn't think he'd play that well. I like Washington getting better with every game. They've got all the tools there. They're right in the mix. Yeah, they are. and They've done better than what they potentially could have considering Hoag was out for the start of that season. So um, defensively, they've got a long way to catch up. They give up way too many easy points. We saw that against United last week where they, they blew an 18-point win on the road uh, or lead on the road. But they've got so much depth. I think when Galloway comes back, they've got size, they've got athleticism. So you certainly can't write them off for a potential team that can win a championship, no doubt about that that i'm giving them a b plus case because i I'm think going they've with done the, well i'm going with a b as well hammond i'm giving uh, alex tui an a one of the most exciting young players i've seen in the competition for a long time yep agree Great. with you there definitely uh now melbourne united won the battle of first versus second without their two nba champions mind you an a case surely Without a doubt, they are the team to beat. This time last year, they were five and eight, eight on the ladder. They went on to win 15 games and missed the playoffs. They're 10 and two. They've had 47 seconds of play this year when they've had their full roster. So for all those other teams that are claiming we've had injury problems, they've had injury problems. They haven't been at full strength apart from less than a minute. So what they've been able to do has been outstanding. Love the way they've coached. I think he's adjusted a little bit, Dean Vickerman. He's got all the tools at his disposal there. The championship is Melbourne's to lose. I agree with that. When you look at the injuries, Daly six games, JLA five, Clark five, Travers one. It comes down to their recruiting, Dean Vickerman, masterstroke being able to um, have Travers come in. But I love their role players that are getting it done for them. Illy, Krebs, Hakporty, uh, Cameron has been fantastic. Travers is still a role player, even though he's fantastic. Dean Vickerman has had an outstanding season 
pre-season with what he recruited and what he's done during the season. Chris Golding, you can't go through this segment without mentioning him because at his age, the way he's stood up with some of those guys out, the shots he's made has been unbelievable. And right now, they you, you're 100% right. It's theirs to lose. They're on track, a long way to go. But A plus for both them as a team and also Dean Vickerman and, uh, and Chris Golding as well. There you go. A exactly plus, right. A pluses all around. Now, Case, obviously it's the, the FIBA window. A quick one before I let you go. Do you think that the league should use this time in the future perhaps for some kind of exhibition game or maybe even bring back the All-Star game, for example? Why not? I think it's a great idea. We've really dropped the ball with this one this year, this season. Perhaps FIBA don't allow the players to play. I'm not 100% on that. The Boomers aren't playing. South Sudan aren't playing. New Zealand aren't playing. Surely we've got to got something going just to amp it up. Well, I think that the All-Star games are outdated. But um, they, the, And I played in lots of those. But I also played in games when it was the Aussies versus the Foreigners. And that would be a great game because there's a lot of you know pride on the line and it would be a real even game as well. I think it'd be fantastic to be able to do that. But some sort of celebration in this time so basketball still in the headlines here in Australia would be great. Yeah, love it. Uh, Case, love your work as well. Thank you so much. We'll chat to you again soon. Look forward to it, guys. Great show. Well, that wraps up the basketball show for this week. All thanks to Code Sports, Boost Mobile and the Throwback Store. Hammer, a week off of NBL. What are you yeah, going to be doing? Well, I don't know. Are you going to be sunbaking? Few wines, what do you got? Going uh, on? I have a weekend away with the girls, but I will be oh. watching. I will be watching the WNBL and the NBA the as well. No, down the coast. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you guys for watching. We will be back next week. Behave, Joe. Behave. <laughs> this is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.